What up guys, it's your boy KFlow. Today I'm going to show you how to remove and reinstall the rear catalytic converters on your Toyota Tacoma. Let's get this thing started. This video was brought to you by KFlow's Crib, your number one resource for Tacoma DIY projects. Make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the bell next to it so you're up to date with the latest videos that I do release. In this video, I also go over tips and common issues with exhaust work. So pay attention, because all this information will definitely save you time and money. And who doesn't like more money, right? Hello, I like money. So we use a 14 millimeter socket and an impact wrench to remove the hardware that connects the rear cat converter to the mid pipe. Then we unclip the O2 sensor and use a 22 millimeter wrench to remove the O2 sensor from the catalytic converter. Here's a quick pro tip guys. You can lock up the two wrenches so you can get better leverage to undo that O2 sensor. Make sure you do this for both the passenger and driver side. Then we use a 14 millimeter socket to remove the nut that holds the rear catalytic converter to the exhaust manifold. And right away, early in the process, I run into an issue. This thing was rusted so bad it rounded. Don't get your panties in a wad guys, because here's a quick pro tip that will get that bolt off real easy. So what we can do is take a smaller size socket. In this case, we use a 13 millimeter socket and just hammer that until it sits flush. And then we can use an impact wrench to remove that nut completely. So we remove the nuts on both the driver and passenger side. Now let's remove the rubber exhaust hangers. And here's another pro tip guys. Use WD-40 on those exhaust hangers and then use channel locks to squeeze them together so that they can slide right off. And we do this for both the passenger and driver side. And here's another pro tip guys. Use a full face shield when working on exhaust parts. There's a lot of rust and a lot of debris. Now we can fully slide off the rear cat converter. And here's the fully removed catalytic converter. At this point, you can do whatever you need to do guys. But in my case, I removed the transmission so I could install a new rear main seal, a new clutch and a new flywheel and those will be in another video. Make sure you check them out. Now let's prep those rear catalytic converters and get to the installation. Let's use a wire brush to remove all that rust from those surfaces. Now we can paint the surface with anti-seize and install a new gasket. Now let's do this for all three pipe ends. We also do this for the front cat converters and the threads. Now we remove the old gasket at the mid pipe with a pry bar and clean that area with a wire brush so that we can apply anti-seize. I didn't get to take a video of this portion, but for the welded nuts at the rear, I did use a cold chisel and a hammer to break those nuts off because they were pretty much rusted to nothing. So here's a quick pro tip for the replacement hardware guys. Use a thread gauge so you can figure out the pitch and the thread of the old hardware so you can buy new ones at the hardware store. I usually use stainless steel as replacements for exhaust hardware. Now the reinstallation is just the reverse. We slide the catalytic converter back in and line it up for reinstallation. We can spray the hangers with WD-40 and re-slide in the rubber mounts and then squeeze them in place with channel locks or by hand. At the rear, we slide in a new exhaust gasket here. For the hardware at the mid pipe, I just use standard type hardware to replace that special one that was mounted on there before. So for a flange nut, I just used a nut and a washer. And for a flange bolt, I just used a bolt and a washer. At this point, we can reinstall the hardware in the front as well as reconnect the oxygen sensors on both the driver and passenger side. 
Thanks for watching this video guys. I just have one final thought to leave with you before you go. So these bolts that I replaced are non-critical bolts. So motor mounts, any suspension parts, and anything structural, I do not use and I do not recommend using the store hardware. Make sure you get those directly from the OEM or get like an OEM grade equivalent for them. But that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you give this video a like. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe and share this video with any of your friends who might benefit from it. So until next time, peace out.